Hello, everyone. It's Faith, and I'm here to bring you another edition of Cast Questions. This episode is with Courtney Holly, the voice of Allison Moretti. If you want to hear the full, uncut, 20-minute version of Courtney's Q&A, please head on over to patreon.com slash boompodcast. Starting at $1 a month, you get exclusive and extended episodes, as well as some other cool goodies. I, in fact, just posted the original script for episode one, First Date, in celebration of Boom's anniversary. Okay, spiel done? Time for the person you're actually here to listen to, Courtney Holly. Hi, my name is Courtney Holly. I'm the voice of Allison Moretti. Um, I'm here to answer some questions for you today, so let's get the ball rolling here. Um, first question is, what or who inspired you to act? My next-door neighbor growing up, Brittany, she... When I got to, like, the junior high level, so, like, seventh grade-ish, she encouraged me to audition for the high school's production of Susical the Musical. And I did. I went with her, and I, I auditioned for it, and I got cast. And, I mean, that was it. it. The whole process really hooked me and kind of sparked whatever it was inside of me and still is inside of me to continue to be doing this at the age of 26. Um... And of course, I mean, I had some of the most incredible teachers along the way. Like, I I really have them to thank for inspiring me and, you know, really believing in me and, and encouraging me to do something that, you know, a lot of people say, well, good luck. You know, it's a unforgiving business. And, you know, it's it takes a village. <laughs> and really, I, I had such an incredible village that inspired me to start doing this. What's the biggest challenge about this role? Um, honestly, I would have to say some of the choices that Allie makes. You know, like, um, her dating preferences? <laughs> there are a lot of times that I'm like, I get the script, and I'm like super excited to go through the script and read it and, and get back into this character again, and then I go, Allie, no, why are you doing this? Like, leave, run, go, like, do not be dating Luke, my god. But... I guess the heart wants what the heart wants, so you gotta, you know, like, as the actor, you have to play that, and it's, you know, it's so rough when, you know, Courtney is here in in this part of my brain saying, like, no, who would ever date that? Who would ever, who would ever go for that? And then there's the alley compartment of my brain that's like, no, Luke is fantastic. Luke is my dream guy because he's this total sweetheart over here, but he's this daredevil that's just, you know, everyone likes a bad boy. And yeah, sure, he pined after my best friend for a little bit, but whatever. He's with me and he loves me. It's fine. So, you know, as as a rational human being, <laughs> I'm sitting here thinking as, you know, as myself, as Courtney, that... God, this chick is crazy. But at the same time, you know, I think about the choices I made with past boyfriends and stuff like that, and I look back and I go, oh, oh, God. But at the time, I was blind to it, you know, and Allie is too. So it's it's more of a struggle as me knowing about these these cryptic things about Luke. And that's just because, like, I, I've been able to read the script. I've seen the parts that Allie hasn't. And, you know, it's a good time. It's a really interesting process to try and compartmentalize those two thoughts, you know, because when when I'm standing across from Brian and and acting out these scenes, like Courtney knows that, you know, God, this is kind of creepy, but Allie is supposed to be totally loving it. And it's fun. That's the job. You know, that's what makes acting fun. Besides your own, who's your favorite character on the show? Mine actually is a duo, and it's Porter's parents. I don't know what it is about them, but they remind me of, like, my grandparents back in Wisconsin. They're just so cute. They're so cute. And I just giggle every time I hear them in an episode, because it's just the interaction between the two and the interaction that they have with the people around them. They're just... They're a solid duo, and I really, I really like them. <laughs> what was your first impression when you heard the first episode fully produced? My first impression after hearing it for the first time was a series of squeaks and noises that I don't think I could ever recreate because I was just so excited no words could come out. I never, ever, ever expected it to be what it was. 
And I mean that because I have never worked on something like this before. And I guess, you know, like I've listened to audio dramas and stuff like that, but I had never, I, I didn't know what to expect. So it like already exceeded my expectations. And it just, it was so cool because, you know, we recorded season one all in the span of like two days, I think I recall. And, you know, you heard the entire story. Like I knew, I knew what was going to happen. And then all of a sudden, I got I got this like unique experience of being a part of it, but then getting to listen to it like, like for the first time, like everybody else. I was just as excited for the next episode to come out as, you know, Joe Schmo down the street who is hearing it for the first time because... It's just incredible how real and big the world that we created is. And I mean, that's not necessarily what it was like in the recording room. You know, like it it became even more real. And I think that's just, it. it's just so darn cool. I just love how creative the people on this team are. <laughs> the end. <laughs> Besides Boom, what's your favorite audio drama or other kind of podcast? Honestly, I am a huge fan of the last podcast on the left. If you haven't listened to it, you should totally do it because it's 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 horror. So it's like it's these scary things. Sometimes they break apart, you know, fictional horror and stuff like that. But like a lot of things that I've listened to are are like true crime and stuff like that. But they break it down. These really scary, scary concepts and scary things that have happened and scary things that are still happening, and they make it so incredibly funny. And I just, I mean, that's my kind of sense of humor. I've got a really dark sense of humor, so it's like they just kind of combine my two favorite things, laughing and true crime, so. (laughs) What do you do when you're not voicing your character, hobbies, other work, etc.? Um, well, I'm an actress, so I am constantly auditioning for films, shows, what have you, um, anything and everything that involves acting. I've found a a niche in voice acting lately. I've been narrating a lot of audiobooks for audible.com. Um, there's that. I paint. I have this thing called synesthesia, and, um, some of you may know what that is. Some of you might not. It's it's very um, new to, I guess, the psychological world, but essentially it's the crossing of senses. So it's technically like a, a disorder, if you will. Um, I use the fact that I can, I can see sounds, <laughs> quote unquote. You can't really see me right now because I'm sitting in front of a microphone, but I'm making those little quote things with my fingers. Um, but yeah, so what I do is um, I'll get commissions here and there for paintings where people will send me at least five songs, you know, it could be a hundred, it could at least be five. And I listen to them over and over and over and over and over again, and I, I paint what I see. So that's kind of a fun little side hobby that I do. Um, yeah, I love my dog. I have a dog. How have I not talked about her yet? Her name is Tessa. She's a mutt. Like, she has 17 billion different kinds of dogs in her, but she is the cutest, sweetest, funniest dog ever. She has the biggest personality, and she's hilarious. Taught her how to get a beer out of the fridge, and, you know, that's pretty much the best dog ever. So, (laughs) yeah, I love my dog. Have you ever done an audio drama before? If so, how does it compare to others? If not, how would you describe your experience? Boom is the first time I've ever done anything like this. Um, In fact, it was the first time I ever did anything voice acting-wise. So I had zero reference for how how something like this should go but I have to say it hooked me it opened up this whole new world for me of of things I can do with my acting you know and that was that in itself was just so exciting for me everyone deserves to work with people like the team I'm working with on this on this podcast because everyone is just so supportive and you know, like, everyone wants to help everyone, and I, I, I find that that's unique to, um, to this project, at least in my experiences thus far. You know, it's, it's a great group, and everyone is so professional. The, the work comes easy. If it's not like that for other projects, 
like boom has ruined me then because <laughs> I'm expecting like, wow, this really this really great environment. <laughs> I feel pretty lucky. Was there anything in particular that attracted you to this project? And I think that is a really cool question to end on because I, like I said before, I had never done anything voice acting wise prior to Boom. So I was going through these casting calls and I came across Boom's casting call that Faith had put out. And I read the description and I read, you know, everything about it, about like the character snippets that were in there. And I thought to myself, like, wow, that would be really cool. And I initially wanted to audition, but for some reason decided no, maybe I shouldn't because like I've never done anything like this before and you know, I don't have I don't have a demo or anything and this and you know, like every excuse in the book that you could make for yourself because you're a little nervous. And a few days went by and the deadline was coming up and Ken, my boyfriend, he um he's an audio engineer and he has his own recording studio here in Nashville, Bonsai Recording. And he came upstairs one day and was like, "Hey, do you want to go do blah 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 with our with our friends tonight and I said yeah yeah I, I do want to go but I think I think I'm going to submit an audition for this this podcast and he kind of looked at me like oh okay that's kind of cool you know what is it and you know I told him about it and I said you know like it says here that I can just you know submit on my phone like I can use my phone's recorder so I I figure why not and he coaxed me into going down into his studio and and professionally recording it and stuff. So thank God for Ken. Um, shout out to you. Callbacks were supposed to be the week after we submitted our auditions and I hadn't heard anything. So I figured, okay, you know, you win some, you lose some. At least I tried. And then the week after that, all of a sudden I get an email saying, like, congratulations, you've been cast as Allison. And I was like, awesome, who's that? <laughs> and here we are three seasons later. Um, probably one of the best decisions I've made. I, I don't know where I'd be right now if I, if I wouldn't have auditioned because I was too afraid to. So, yay. Thank you so much for listening to me, Babylon. And I don't know, get people listening. Tell your mom about it. Tell your grandma. Tell your dog. Listeners like you are the reason why Boom keeps going and has been doing so well. So thank you so, so much for tuning in. If you want to make sure you don't miss any episodes, bonus or otherwise, please subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. For more info on the show, where to find us on social media, and a link to our Teespring store, where you can find t-shirts, stickers, and other cool stuff, please visit boom.observerpictures.com. Thank you so much for listening. We really, really appreciate it. And be sure to tell a friend about the show. We'll be back next week with another interview. Until next time.